on this afternoon? Yes. All right, well, I'm excited to be here, and we're going to have some fun. So the first thing we like to do when we start a cooking class is to sing some songs. Is that okay? Okay. Can you guys, in, can you guys indulge with me a little bit? You guys got it? We're going to use a lot of food, verbiage. Can you, can you indulge with me a little bit as we sing some good songs? Is that okay? So on your, on your cooking class sheet that you got, on your handout, you actually have a song on the back of the second page. On the back of the, I mean, the fir- back of the first page, I'm sorry. Back of the first page. And we're going to read this song. Does anybody come to the cooking class on Thursday we had? So some of y'all were there on Thursday. So I got some, okay, you guys should be masters after this. You got the recipe twice. We're going to do the same exact class, a few little extra details we're going to give. But we're going to have some even more fun today. So the song goes like this. It says, fruits and grains and vegetables, nuts and seeds is all I it tastes what? So good, so good to me. Let's not live to eat, but let's do what? Eat to live. All right, you guys got that? All right, it goes. Fruits and grains and vegetables, nuts and seeds is all I need. It tastes so good, so good to me. Let's not live to eat. But let's eat to live. You guys got it? All right, let's try it one more time. All right. Fruits and grains and vegetables, nuts and seeds is all I need. It tastes so good, so good to me. Let's not live to eat, but let's eat to live. Well, hey, friends, my name is Chef Chu, and as I always say, going to give you something to chew on. You guys got that? All right, so we're going to have some fun. So when I say, as I always say, going to give you something to chew on. Oh, you guys are good. All right. Who needs Food Network when we got the Stone Tower Church? Amen? Come on now. Didn't, th- didn't know you had so much fun at church. So we're going to be cooking some good food today. I'm going to be teaching you guys right before Thanksgiving how to make a delicious, delicious three cheese mac and cheese without the cheese. Come on now. Three cheese mac and cheese without the cheese. Come on now. Does that sound good? Now you guys are probably wondering how in the world is he going to make a three cheese? Not one cheese, not two cheese, but how many? Three cheese mac and cheese without the cheese. And it's going to taste better than the mac and cheese. Now, I'm, I'm setting myself up for a high standard right there now. Come on now. I said it's going to taste better than the mac and cheese. Come on now. I'm excited now. I'm getting you guys excited. So we're going to make some three cheese mac and cheese. I'm going to show you guys some secrets on how to make it creamy. We don't want that mac and cheese that this falls and is watery and it's kind of soupy. We want that creamy casserole type mac and cheese. Amen? Y'all know about that kind of mac and cheese? That's kind of mac and cheese we're talking about. That's going to be creamy on the inside. It's not going to be too, uh, you know, too fatty. It's going to have actually uh, no cholesterol. It's going to be very healthy, very delicious. So it's going to be a mac and cheese that you can indulge in. Amen? Now, come on. I'm excited now. We can indulge in this mac and cheese, okay? We're also going to be making uh, some delicious, I call it my soul food greens. Soul food greens. Now, I don't know about you guys. I love some greens. Anybody out here know about greens? Come on now. So I'm going to do something a little different. We're not going to be using collard greens. We're not going to be using mustard greens. We're going to be using some other different types of greens. And you're going to see how to make it really delicious. I mean, it's mouth-watering. I mean, savory, all the flavors. So we're going to be talking about that. We're going to make a quick kale salad as well. And um, we're going to have some, a lot of fun. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm just going ahead and, and talking about a little bit about, you know, why I do what I do. Many people ask me and say, what's the purpose behind eating this way and cooking this way. And for me, the first thing I think about is that eating is a very intimate experience. Anybody agree with that? Very intimate. So, so, so intimate that, again, when we think about even our cultures and who we are, food is something that actually makes up our identity, our culture. Would anybody agree? You know, some of our, again, our greatest memories goes to when we had those family, uh, you know, our Thanksgiving dinners and our, our Christmas dinners and, you know, those cookouts. You know, we identify our culture and our, and, our, and our who we are with the foods that we eat. Does that make sense? Anybody ever been to Epcot Center? Or I guess Disneyland over here. I'm sorry, from the East Coast. All right. So I don't know if they have, like, the Ep- they have Epcot Center in Disneyland or something like that out here? No. Yeah, I got it on warm. So I kind of want it hot, so when I sizzle that good stuff, does it smell like it's burning? Okay, okay, okay. I don't want to burn nothing down now. 
All right, let me turn, turn on the vent. I don't want to burn nothing down. All right, it doesn't work. Okay. We'll be okay. I'll turn it on low. I'll just turn it off. So, again, when you think about Epcot Center, I had a first time with Epcot Center uh, this summer. My wife and I, we left the kids at home, which was a blessing. Amen? <laughs> All right? Just me and my wife, we had, to have a, had a date at the Epcot Center. I asked the lady, when, you know, when you get to, like, Florida or you go to Disneyland, any of these big old places, the first thing you do when you get to the hotel, they got the paper, the travel agency there, and what do they want to do? Save some tickets, right? And I said, what's the most romantic place that I can go in Disney World? And where do you think I went? I went to Epcot Center, right? Not Universal Studios, you know, not all the other big old rides and stuff. I wanted to go to a place that was most romantic. And what was so exciting about Epcot Center, because you're traveling the what? The world, right? And every, you, go to get, you get to go to different countries, but the feature of every country is their what? Is the, the food, right? Every country, you go to Russia, they got their food. You go to, to Canada, they have their food. You go to Mexico, they have their food. Every place has a different type of food that represents who they are. And so for Americans, you know, food is super, super important. You know, food companies make a lot of money off of guess who? Off of us. And they've learned, they've learned the type of ingredients that make us keep coming back over and over and over again. They like things that are addictive. You know that, right? <laughs> things that are addictive, you know, the, the sugars and the, the oils and the fats. They want to give as much of that as possible to us because we know we're going to keep coming what? Back. You remember Lay's potato chips? What did they say? I bet you can't eat just So you eat the whole and then maybe another bag, right? Because they know when they give us that, that combination of those fats and those oils and that salt and that crunch and they got some other ingredients, you don't know what in the world it is that's also messing with your brain, and those, those excitotoxins and all those ingredients they put inside those foods. We keep coming back for more. And the thing is, is that that's causing a crisis, a, a, a devastation in this country. Most of us have lost someone close to us in the last five or ten years due to a health or lifestyle illness. Anybody want to agree with me on that? For me, I lost my dad three years ago, four different cancers, bone cancer, brain cancer, lung cancer, prostate cancer. Again, all those cancers hit all at once. My father called me when I was doing a cooking show. I'm doing a healthy cooking show. My dad calls me and says, I didn't want to bother you, but guess what? I'm in stage four cancer. Who wants to get that call? He's in stage four cancer. He just found out. His life is literally, you know, in shambles and so forth. But he's telling me and saying, look, man, I'm, I'm, this is it. You need to come on home. Didn't want to call me because I was doing a TV show. He said, I don't want to give you a call, but I, you know, I got to call you. So this is what we're dealing with. And so I literally had to stop my show early and go and tend to my father. And it, it was a blessing experience that we had. You know, he, he actually lived for about another year and a half. And so we got some intimate time. That was a blessing. But again, my father died way too young. My son was only about a year, two, maybe uh, about two years old at the time. He didn't get to see my daughter who was born about a year and a half ago. So he missed out seeing his grandchildren grow up. He missed out seeing me still, you know, in my business and seeing the things that, you know, that God has done for me in my life. And so I miss my dad. I think about him so often. And I say to myself is that if if I could do something, if I can, can be an inspiration to someone, let them know that you can eat better. You can eat actually delicious And it can be good. You can have those recipes that you love in a way that's actually healthy, that's not actually bringing death, but bringing what? Life. So for me, when I think about cooking classes and feeding people and eating, it's a life or death issue. It's not just eating good food. No, it's a life or death issue. Is that okay? You all with me? I wanted to give you some context. And when you start thinking about what we're doing, it makes more sense to you all. Does that make sense? So for me, this is more than just a, it's not just a job. I just, I'm not here to get to you all just getting all excited. We're going to have some excitement. But for me, it's a passion that I believe is so important, especially in the time in which we're living in. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So we're going to go ahead and have some fun. We're going to start off by making a delicious cheese sauce. Now, I say cheese with a Z. Is that okay? Cheese with a what? With a Z. All right. And we're going to show you how to make a vegan cheese sauce. Some of you all may have made some of these recipes, but I'm going to show you guys how to do a simple technique. Now, I want you all to put your scientist uh, goggles on. Anybody got scientist goggles on here? Any scientist goggles? Come on now. So imagine you have your scientist goggles on. And again, when you become a food scientist, which each of you all are, whether you know it or not, because every time you make a recipe, you are doing science. Does that make sense? 
Every time you cook food, you're actually experiencing science. Water boils at what temperature? Anybody knows? Water boils at what temperature? Huh? Huh? I forgot myself, so you guys will tell me. <laughs> it's 207, right? We know that, right? But it's science, right? When it gets to a certain temperature, it boils, right? You know, and what happens in, in the food scientist world is that they, they try to get really, uh, they try to get real, real deep with it. They try to find out, you know, these patented ingredients that you never heard of. And they try to, you know, extract things from plants or, or, or the animal kingdom. Or they even take things from the sewage as well, if you didn't know that. Have you ever heard of pretzels before? The big pretzels? Ah, I hope I don't scare nobody. Anybody like pretzels out there, the big pretzels? All right, so if you ever think about big pretzels, right, you know those big white crystals? What does it taste like? Ah, do you know that's not technically salt? For not some, oh, I'm not saying every single, every single pretzel is like this, but many pretzels use an ingredient called urea. Ah, hope I didn't scare anybody. Because you understand, like, you know, when we, it's, it's sodium, a lot of salt, if that makes sense, nitrogen, does that make sense? So they use those ingredients and they find ways to take things that we typically just think is just kind of being wasted, but they find creative ways to use those to be able to give back to, to the consumer. Does that make sense? So just know that, again, you need to know what you're eating because a lot of things that we're eating, we don't know what in the world we're eating. So the question I want to ask you guys is how does cheese become yellow? All right, so typically there's some type of what? Some coloring, right? Sometimes they use carrageenan and some of those ingredients, but many times there's some type of food coloring that, again, is made from some type of chemical that they can extract in, you know, pounds and pounds and pounds and pounds of it to be able to get these colorings. But I'm going to tell you guys today to put your food scientist goggles on and also your thinking caps on and ask the question, how are we going to make our cheese yellow? So our first active ingredient is cashews, and we're going to be using the what nut? The cashew nut, and we're going to have it, it's going to be one cup of cashews to one cup of, anybody want to guess? All right, but it's another ingredient that we're going to use. Carrots, okay, so again, the simple science behind this is that white and orange makes what? Ah, you guys are like amazing, man. White and what? Orange makes what? Makes yellow. So again, white and orange makes yellow. So again, doesn't take a rocket science to figure that out. You know, you can also use things like pimentos. Many chefs like to use, uh, make pimento cheese by using cashews and red peppers. And you can use orange peppers, whatever pep color pepper you want. When I first made my first cheese sauce recipe about 20 years ago, I used a recipe called or an ingredient called orange juice. <laughs> hey, I tell you, it worked though, I tell you, you know. A little bit of acidity, you know. It had the yellow, the orange, and the, the, I don't know what else I used with it, man. But somehow, I had all my college buddies come over. I just became a vegan in like 2001. And literally, man, they had my cashew cheese made with orange juice. And they, I, they all said they liked it. They don't know if it was true or not, but they ate it, right? So again, everybody has a journey. So my journey today, we're going to show you guys how to make something called a cashew base. The first part of this recipe is one cup of cashews. To one cup of water. One cup of cashews of what? One cup of water. And this is what I call my cashew base. This is a very important step here because this cashew base can be used in many different uh, recipes. What I like to do when I teach cooking classes is give you many different principles that you can build on. Things you can take home and do other recipes. So cashews, again, is a very fatty nut. But the great thing is when you blend it with water, one cup to one cup, it's going to give you a base that can be used in many different directions. So, for example, once I make this base, you're going to see how it looks. I can use that base for making gravies. I can use that base for making salad dressings. I can also use that base and put it inside of uh, different baking items as a, like a mock butter, if that makes sense. And so, again, this cashew base, the reason why it can be used is because I'm actually using the fat from the nut, and I'm using that to fat, yeah, I guess as a fatter, I guess a fatty ingredient to kind of give me that texture that you find in cheese, if that makes sense. So this is not going to make a, a melting cheese that you might find like in a, uh, it's not going to make a grilled cheese sandwich. It's going to be more like a Velveeta style cheese, if that makes sense. More like a nacho cheese. Does that make sense? All right? 
So again, always ask that question, why? Why am I using this ingredient? And so all I'm doing when I'm going plant-based, when we think about plant-based eating, we're replacing the things that we love with plant-based ingredients that can do it even better or just as good. Does that make sense? You guys got that? So we're replacing the things that we love with ingredients that can do it just as good or even what? Better. And the great thing is that it's always going to be better, especially if it doesn't have the harmful effects that the other ingredients are providing for us. Does that make sense? All right, let's do it. I'm going to put this on low. All right, so blend it for about a minute. You want to get it creamy, okay? Got to be creamy. Vitamix is a great blender. Blendtec is a great blender. They're expensive, but they do the job very well. Another 15 seconds and we are done. All right. There we go. So again, I make a lot of this in my, re- I have a, a, again, a vegan restaurant called The Veg Shop. We're in Oakland. Today I'm going to let you guys taste one of our signature products. I brought my Better Chew Proteins today. And this is some of the best tasting plant protein you're ever going to taste in your life. And I have it right behind me. It looks like steak. It tastes like steak. But guess what? It ain't steak. And we're going to make some barbecue ribs. And you guys, when you try these barbecue ribs, you're going to say, oh, man, where have you been all my life? (laughs) All right? But I take this cheese sauce. We actually take this beef that we actually make. So this is our actual better chew ribs. I'm going to take this in a little while. I'm going to saute this up. We actually shred it in the restaurant, and we make our own vegan Philly cheese steaks. And I make this cheese sauce as our active ingredient or our main ingredient for our cheese steaks. So I'm giving you guys some secrets today. So I'd like to get some money from you guys if you guys go out here and use my recipes now. I always give my disclaimer. At least give me 1% of your gross. Not your net, but your gross. Amen? Come on, I'm going to ask a little bit of money, you know what I'm saying? I can't get something. All right. But, you know, I do it for the love. I'm not doing it for the money. Amen? Amen. All right, so one cup of cashew base. Y'all see how creamy that is? Again, so, again, it can be used as a gravy. I can take this same recipe. I can actually use this as an emulsifier. So I can actually use a water and oil and make a salad dressing. But when I blend this ingredient with the water and the oil, the actual cashew base actually emulsifies the actual water and the oil, making an amazing salad dressing. Does that make sense? And you can take that and actually use other ingredients so for as far as garlic powder, onion powder, parsley, any kind of herb. You can add a little bit of uh, your chicken style seasoning flavors, nutritional yeast flakes, salt, whatever those things are, and make some amazing salad dressing with this base. So again, this ingredient is an amazing what? Emulsifier. What does that mean? It takes I- ingredients like water and oil, and it helps to blend them together so they don't actually separate. Does that make sense? You guys with me? I'm giving you guys some secrets now. You guys looking at me like I'm like, ooh, I like this, brother. He give me all his secrets. I like that. There you go. I don't mind. It was freely given to me, so I want to freely give it to you. But do not ask me how I make my meat, so I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> you know, my wife, when we was uh, dating, it came to a point where things got really serious. And she was in my kitchen quite frequently. And I said to her, I said, listen, when you learn how to make my meats, you might as well know it's done. You got that? I don't got to say I'm going to marry you. You, When I show you how to do this, just know there's no turning back. So before I even asked her to marry me, which I did, I showed her how to make my special meats. And at that point, I knew that she was going to be my wife. You got that? So none of y'all, we ain't getting married, so I'm good, okay? So don't ask me how to make it, all right? You guys got that? All right, I'm messing with y'all. All right, one cup of carrots, all right? There we go. And we're going to do this. We're making, I like to call it, I like to say we're making some baby food. Most of y'all know how to make baby food, right? All right, so what I'm going to do is just put this right to like halfway full. We're going to make a really simple, we're going to take cooked carrots. I already cooked my carrots. I boiled some carrots. You can't use raw carrots because it will not work. You have to cook the carrots. And after you cook the carrots, you're going to blend the carrots and make a baby food type texture. Um, And again, I normally just fill the water halfway. You don't want it too liquidy because it's not going to be as creamy if you've got too much water in your your, your actual uh, baby food or your carrot puree, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and blend this up. And I'm going to use, I need one cup of carrot puree, okay? All right, there we go. 
And you don't have to clean the blender. I mean, you could, but it's not necessary. All right, so again, I got my, I'm going to do one cup. So the ratio, again, one cup of cashews to how much water? So as the ratio is one, two. All right, so when you think about food, start looking at recipes more from a ratio perspective. It makes, easy, it, makes it easy for you to actually multiply the recipe if you've got to make it for more people or less people. Does that make sense? So if you need to make it for 20 people, you can say one cup. So I need to use four cups of uh, cashews to how much water? Four cups of water, because the ratio is one, two, one. Does that make sense? So you can multiply these recipes out by having a ratio from in your, in your, in, in, as you look at the recipe. So again, so this recipe for the cheese is now one cup of carrot puree to one cup of cashew base. You guys got that? One cup of what? Carrot puree to one cup of cashew base. Okay, so I'm going to do that right here. So I got one cup of carrot base, all right, and now I need one cup of carrot puree. It's going to bring me to two cups. Boom, where do you go? All right. So I got my one cup of carrot puree. Put this over here for now. And we're going to now take this, I'm going to rinse this out quickly, and we're going to take this and we're going to blend this. And we're going to make our amazing, delicious cheese sauce, made in minutes. You can, some of you all asked me yesterday, how do you start a restaurant? You can make a restaurant just by having nacho cheese. Now, if you had nacho cheese, you can have a food truck, amen? You can also have a food cart right here in, Oak, right here in Portland. Have, you have some of the best nacho cheese. And get some of the meats that we make, man, you'd be in business. I'm telling you what I know. All right, so we got our two cups. One cup of carrot puree to one cup of, help me out, one cup of what? Cashew base. base. One cup of carrot puree to one cup of cashew base. Now the last ingredients I'm going to be using is an ingredient called my chicken style seasoning. Chicken style seasoning. Okay, so I'm on the vegan cheese sauce. I'm making, I'm using a chicken style seasoning. And in this recipe, again, I modified this slightly. Uh, but again, you're going to see I'm going to be using, again, about a quarter cup of seasoning on this recipe, Okay. So again, I'm going to be taking, uh, I don't have a tablespoon measure. Ah, oh boy. In my uh, box over there, uh, can you help me, Carl? In my box over here, I got some uh, cup measures. You don't mind getting that for me? In the box over there, on the, by the, by the um, right there. There you go. We got some right there. Just give me the uh, utensils over there. Just, uh, okay, that's cool. I'm good. I'm good, actually, sir. I'm got it. We got it. We're good to go. All right, so I'm going to do a quarter cup in here. All right, so boom, four tablespoons, make a quarter cup, three, four, okay? So I'm using a chicken-style seasoning. I give you guys at the very bottom of the page where you can actually buy some of this chicken-style seasoning. I make my own, but there's one. I think you guys have an Adventist book center here. Is that correct? Okay, or you can buy it online. It's called Bill's Best. Okay, you can use this to make a very quick, uh, delicious cheese sauce. The active ingredient in the seasoning is called nutritional yeast flakes. What is it called? Nutritional yeast flakes okay so again this is the active ingredient and so if you don't have this ingredient use the same uh as fame base so for about every quarter cup of nutritional yeast flakes you're going to use about a half of teaspoon of salt does that make sense so you can use the same exact ratio if you don't have the cheese sauce i mean if you don't have the seasoning blend about a quarter cup of the seasoning or the nutritional yeast flakes to about a half a teaspoon of salt you guys got that and you can just salt it to taste. But the seasoning blend makes it really easy to make this recipe. So next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and blend this up. Now, optional, you can add a little bit of oil to this. It gives you a little bit more velocity. You don't really need it. I normally don't use it. But if you want a little bit more extra kind of kick, a little bit more velocity, meaning it makes it a little bit more smooth, you can actually add a little bit of oil to this. You can also use different oils that gives you different flavors. If you know that different oils have different flavors, if that makes sense, you can use that as well if you want to get a different kind of uh, spin to the recipe. Also, if you want to add some cayenne pepper to this, if you want to add some different vegetables to this, again, you can use pimentos. You can add other elements to this to kind of give a really kind of unique kind of cheese recipe, if that makes sense. You guys got that? All right, I'm going to blend it up. So white and orange makes what color? Yellow. All right, let's see yellow happen. All right. Wow, it's turning yellow. (laughs) 
There we go. All right, we're almost done. All right. And I'll probably clean up the sides, get, get the rest of that in there, but I'm not, for sake of time, I want you all to see that. You all see my yellow cheese, okay? Now, and again, if I heat this up, so what I do, I use this, this is a very multi-purpose cheese. I use this in the rest, rest, restaurant like mayo. So I use it just like mayonnaise in the restaurant. So I don't actually use mayonnaise in my restaurant. I call this my hub sauce, and I use this in all of my sandwiches. If I heat it up, the texture begins to change once you heat this up. It actually becomes more gelatinized. Did I say that correctly? Sounded good. <laughs> but it actually starts to melt, and it has that nice Velveeta kind of cheese kind of texture, if that makes sense, when you heat it up. So that heat actually makes it, it has that nice, again, Velveeta kind of cheese kind of texture. But right now, as it stands, once it's cold, as it's cold, it's more like a mayo or like a, a vegan sriracha sauce. I don't know if you've seen like Just Mayo. They had a, it's a, a brand out there. They have like sriracha mayo and stuff like that. It has a very similar texture to that. So I use this in different applications for different things. And we're going to be using this again today for our mac and cheese. But here's the thing. The question is, if you actually just take this ingredient and just put this on your mac and cheese, it's going to be an okay mac and cheese. It's not going to be bad. But anybody that's eating mac and cheese like dairy-based mac and cheese. It's going to eat that cashew-based milk, I mean, cashew cheese in this, uh, if you just use these two ingredients, they're probably not going to be super excited about your mac and cheese. It's going to be okay. It's going to be good. But it's not going to be that casserole-type mac and cheese that people are really used to. Does that make sense? So we want to get to that level. So the question becomes, how do we get to that level? So here's a secret ingredient. And I really should charge you guys for this one, man, because this is my mama's recipe right here, man. You know, mama, then, I don't know if she gave me permission to be telling y'all this. But again, it's life or death, right? And I know some of y'all are going to steal you that mac and cheese. So I got to give you my best shot that I can, right? So that you can actually make a delicious mac and cheese. So what I'm going to, guys, show you how to do is make a... Our secret ingredient to make this mac and cheese, like a creamy casserole mac and cheese, we're going to be making a delicious cream of mushroom kind of gravy. If that makes sense? A cream of what? Mushroom gravy. So I'm going to go ahead and start off by cutting up some mushrooms. I like Cutco knives. Anybody know about Cutco knives? All right. So don't cut your finger off of Cutco knives. They're really sharp. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and mince up some mushrooms. Okay. And what I'm going to do... We're going to make a gravy. I'm going to teach you guys another ratio on how to make a gravy that's perfect every time. Perfect every time. And the ratio for this gravy is going to be one-third cup of flour to two cups of water. What did I say? One-third cup of flour to what? Two cups of water. All right? You never have lumpy gravy again. You guys got that? Never have what? Lumpy gravy again. So, again, the ratio is 1 to 6. What is that ratio? 1 to 6. One-third cup to two cups of water. One cup of flour to how much water? Six. You guys got it. You guys getting it? All right. It's a ratio. So, one-third cup to two cups or one cup of flour to six cups of water, okay? So, what I'm going to do, go ahead and get this my stove on right now and we're going to go ahead and put a little oil to get this rocking and oh boy oh boy when you start smelling this food you guys are going to start getting mad at me I didn't want to start cooking yet but I know when you start smelling the flavors and the aromas boy it's going to be on now uh, it's going to be on all right now I'm going to put a little garlic in here just to get it started a little garlic so I'm going to go ahead and put some garlic in here it's going to take a little time to get heated up a little bit of garlic. All right, so I got a few ingredients. While that's getting heated up, go ahead and talk about some of the ingredients that we're going to be using. So again, I got the one-third cup of flour, two cups of water. I'm going to be adding a little bit of milk. Um, that's going to add a little bit of extra uh, creaminess to my, to my uh, uh, gravy that I'm making. I'm also going to add a little bit of butter. Again, some of these, again, if you want a low-fat version, just don't put the butter. Just don't put the milk in it. Uh, at least put the milk in it, but you can omit the butter if you like to. Uh, but again... These are the ingredients that are going to help make this creamy, delicious cream of mushroom. You can take the same recipe again and make a cream of mushroom soup. You can use that for different uh, gravies. I think my brother in the back made gravy yesterday. He was making gravy. What's your name, sir? Eddie. 
Yeah, Mr. Eddie was making some gravy for you guys for dinner yesterday. But again, you can make this gravy. I mean, it's made with, I mean, you're talking about the ingredient cost. I mean, just think about we're making a mac and cheese, right? We got noodles. The box of noodles only costs a dollar, right? Maybe $1.50, right? The cashews, only use one cup of cashews. So that's probably about 75 cents. The water's, you know, it's water. The carrots, only a cup of carrots, that's like 15 cents, 10 cents, right? And the mushrooms, I'm using about a half a container of mushrooms, which is about $2. The flour is probably about 15 cents or 10 cents, right? The butter, I'm only going to use like a little tablespoon of butter, so that's not a lot. You know, the cheese, I'm going to be using some more cheeses here in a second. I'll tell you about that in a little bit. And we got some milk. But the point is, I can make a whole casserole dish of mac and cheese for less than seven, 6 or $7. This is going to give me a good almost 12 servings, 12 to 15 servings. For how much money? So people always say to me, oh, Chef Chu, you know, eating vegan, it costs too much money. Well, if you go buy it, you better believe it. I'm going to charge you about $6, 7 for my mac and cheese at the restaurant, right? You know, because I need to make some money. got to pay my payroll, payroll and my expenses and stuff like that. But if you make it yourself, come on. Yeah. It can be a lot more affordable. You can go out and celebrate and go out to restaurants every now and then. But if you want to actually transition to eating healthy, the cost is not that expensive. This morning, man, we had, man, Miss Parker made us some good food this morning, didn't we, Shane? I mean, come on, it was delicious now. We had some still-cut gro- oats, man, that she made. I mean, who thought still-cut oats could taste good? And it was amazing. We had some milk to go on with it. She had some maple syrup. She had the bananas, the blueberries, the, I mean, she hooked it up, the coconut. And then we had some steak on the side. Oh, man, I was eating good, brother, with that steak, man. And we had some barbecue sauce to dip in a little bit, man, a little dip, dip. You know, I was eating real good this morning. All right, so, again, it don't have to cost too much money to be able to eat healthy. So don't, don't think, keep saying that. Somebody say, oh, it costs a lot of money to eat healthy. Say, that's a lie. It's not the truth. It's a lie. Because it can, be, it can be affordable if you do it right. Okay, so I want you all to smell that garlic, man. And when you say, whoo, come on now. That's what I'm talking about. About to get you all upset. Now, I'm going to feed you at the end. Don't get, don't get too upset at me now. All right. So I'm gonna, let's, go ahead, let's go ahead and get going now. I know you can't see. I'm going to bring it around here in a second. I'm putting the mushroom. I want you all just to imagine with me. I got my mushrooms on there now. All right. You got to imagine. Can you guys imagine? All right, so just imagine right now that the, the, the mushrooms are soaking up all that flavor from the garlic and it's infusing. Because what happens as it cooks, the mushrooms begin to, ex- to, begin to kind of uh, kind of like percolate. That little, you understand what I'm coming from? The flavors from the garlic, the juices from the garlic is going to infuse into the mushrooms. Y'all got what I'm saying right now? All right, come on now. I'm going to add a little bit of seasoning, a little bit of my chicken style seasoning, a little bit of that inside of that. All right. And what I want this to do, I want this to brown. So one thing you have to do when, you be, when, you're, a, when you're a cook, you got to be patient when you cook. You can't always stir the food too fast. Because I want that, that, that garlic to brown and caramelize, and then I want that mushrooms to also brown and caramelize, because that's going to bring out the flavor in the actual gravy. Does that make sense? I want the gravy to have an explosive flavor in my lips when I taste it. Does that make sense? All right, so I'm letting it go ahead and brown. Another 30 seconds, and this should be ready to go. All right. All right, come on, get a camera with that, Shane. You can come get a little close-up right there, sir. All right, so that's looking really good. It's browning. I wish you guys can see this, but it's okay, because I'm going to show it to you in a second. All right, smelling good. There we go. I got the how much flour? How much? One-third cup. All right. One-third cup. So I'm going to go ahead quickly. I'm going to give you guys a quick look at this so you guys can see this, okay? So you guys can see that right there? Okay, you guys see that right there? So it's all sizzling still? Okay, can you kind of can see it like that? Can you guys see that? Okay, so I got the flour on top. All right, so next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to let, my, my, let my, uh, my flour just brown just a little bit. I want it to brown. Okay, so then I'm going to actually add the two cups of water, and that's going to just suck up all that delicious, uh, all, all that flavor is going to come into that water, and that liquid is going to be really amazing. Go ahead and rinse out my cup measure here. So I'm letting it brown. I'm not, I'm not messing with it. I'm not turning it. Very important. All right. So next thing I'm going to do, need two cups, a little bit more. 
All right. So next thing I'm going to do right here is add this right into it. Perfect. All right. So this is going to start. start I got to stir it up with my, my, uh, my little wooden spatula here. And it's all right here now. Let's see, so you know, this is going to be perfect gravy without lumps. No lumps. Come on now. I know some of y'all made dumpling gravy before, right? You know, you just try to make the gravy and it got little dumplings in there, man. Like, man, I can't get the dumplings out. If that does happen, it's okay. Because what you do if you got dumplings in it, just put it inside of a blender and it takes it all out, okay? Just know that. But now you don't got to worry about that happening ever again. All right. So here we go. This is cooking up. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to add a little bit, a few extra ingredients, all right? To give you guys a quick, I want you guys to see the process here. All right, you guys see how that looks right there? Come on now. Y'all see that right there? All right. Perfect every time. Takes, don't take a long time now. Y'all got that? Now, that's some good eating right here, man. Get a little bit of biscuits on the side or some, some dinner rolls. Got the mushrooms in there for some umami. So, again, while I'm using certain, I'm going to explain some more science to you guys. Let it cook a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of milk, a little bit of butter to this. But I'm using ingredients that give off a very savory type of taste to our taste buds. So, again, we have how many taste buds? Anybody know? There actually is probably a lot more than we know, but the, the, ones that, the main ones that we know, there's actually how many? Five. five. Okay, there's five. Help me out. Give me some. We got sweet. We got sour. What else? We got bitter. We got salt. And there's one more. Savory, or it's called umami. Okay, umami. Now, again, the reason why we love, again, I talk about eating meat and the, the secrets that I've learned about why we like meat and cheese so much. It's because of that savory taste. And that savory taste comes from that, again, from our taste buds called the umami or, the, again, the savory receptors on our tongue that catches that savory taste. Now, what happens, the way that it happens, it comes from ingredients or the protein molecules within food called the glutamates, okay? Does that make sense? That's why, you know, the food scientist says, oh, the glutamates make a very savory taste, and it makes people come back for more. It makes their mouths, uh, you know, start to kind of like get all excited. And so what they figured out, they can make an ingredient called monosodium glutamate, which is a concentration of glutamates in a very chemicalized format, and that causes you to get really excited, causes you to come back over and over and over again. But the great thing is this same glutamates are actually, again, it's a protein, one of the, a protein that's found in most foods, or found not in most foods, but in some foods. So, for example, in mushrooms, the reason why in Asian culture they use uh, mushrooms is because it has, guess what? Lots of glutamates. The reason why they use fish, and they use a fish sauce or an oyster sauce, all those different ingredients because it has those naturally occurring glutamates. Also, they use soy sauce because it has those naturally occurring glutamates. So also, nutritional yeast flakes. The reason why I said we make a chicken-style seasoning using nutritional yeast flakes is because it has natural occurring glutamates. Also, the reason why we love things like barbecue sauce and, and also tomato sauce or ketchup is because tomatoes have natural glutamates. And these are foods that we keep coming back for over and over again. So for when I want to find out how to do a nice savory dish, I use ingredients that's going to give me that what? That savory taste. You guys got the science of that? Mm -hmm. I'm teaching you guys how to be chefs. Y'all with me? Yeah. All right. I hope I ain't burning the food up. I'm talking too much now. <laughs> All right. Now what I'm going to do, a little bit of butter. And when you guys see this, you're going to get mad at me, boy. You're going to get mad at me. Oh, man. Because all you think about now is that, that your belly. Now, I got you guys warmed up. All right, I got the milk right here. A little bit of milk. All right, now we're in business. All right, this is about done. Okay? A little bit of soy milk. So I use, I use soy milk. You can use any kind of milk you like, almond milk. Uh, cashew milk, you can use whatever. Also, with that first recipe that I gave you guys with the cashew base, if you use one cup of cashews to four cups of water, you can make your own cashew milk from scratch. One cup of cashews to how much water? Four cups of water, a little bit of vanilla, a little bit of sweetener, whatever you like to use, whether it be uh, natural sugar or date sugar or honey or maple syrup. You can make your own delicious cashew milk from scratch. Now, here you go. You got some good old-fashioned gravy right here made in minutes. Oh, man, oh, man. Looks some kind of good now, y'all. Some kind of good right there. Look good, right? 
All right. So I'm going to add that to my uh, mac and cheese. So now the last thing we're going to do, we're going to make our mac and cheese. And you guys are going to get to see this. So, okay, what I'm going to do, I got my mac and cheese here. I'm going to move these out the way. All right. So here I got my pan of mac and cheese, pan of mac and noodles. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do first step first. I'm going to actually heat the noodle. I'm going to actually season the noodles. One thing I always recommend, this is something that you don't have to do if you want a low salt version. You can actually omit this flavor. But I like to make sure my flavor of my mac and cheese is actually flavored all the way through all the bite. Does that make sense? I don't want the flavor to be on the outside. I want the flavor to go all the way to the middle of that noodle. So every bite has flavor, if that makes sense. So what I like to do, I'm going to put some of my seasoning right on my noodles. You can just use simple salt if you want to. You don't have to use a chicken style seasoning, but I'm using, my, using this flavor. Okay? I'm going to add a little bit of oil. Not a whole lot. Just enough to be able to, so I can actually get the uh, mixed up. All right. Mixing that up. So now my noodles are going to be flavored. I can take this, at this point, I can have some fun right now, y'all. I can take these seasoned noodles, throw some of that gravy on there now. Come on now. Now you can use different kind of pastas, too. You can go penny pasta, rotini pasta, any kind of pasta you want. Just season your noodles up, whatever kind of flavor. Use some garlic salt. You can use some adobe salt. You can just go really simple. Take some of that gravy right there with some vegetables, string beans, asparagus, broccoli, and you got a dinner by yourself just with those simple ingredients. Okay, you guys with me? All right. You can take any kind of like a meat substitute, like a ground beef crumble, a vegan band, ground beef crumble. You can use anything and add it to it as a nice protein. But these are simple recipes that can be made in minutes. You got to be creative when you think about cooking, okay? So I'm giving you guys uh, base ingredients that you can use to make a lot of other different types of foods. Y'all with me here? Yeah. All right. All right, there we go. Boom. Here's the fun part. We're going to make... We're going to do the last step here. We're going to put our last ingredient. So what do you think I'm going to add to it? I got a three cheese, mac and cheese, infused with a delicious Grandma, Brown, Grandma Brown's gravy, okay? And that Grandma Brown's gravy is going to make it like a casserole. That's what's going to cause it. When it go on that plate, it ain't going to fall down. It's going to sit there. This is creamy, as melty as it can be. It's going to be amazing. All right, so each of these ingredients has a specific role that it plays in my recipe. And again, I have my cashew cheese, Okay. All right. Throw that in there. Like that. All right. So remember, you can have a good mac and cheese with cashews. It'll be good. It won't be that bad, but it'll be good. Now I'm going to add this ingredient called diet cheese. Now I recommend and Some people say I'm just going to take noodles and I'm going to this, this, this. I'm not going to use any other cheese except for diet cheese. If you do that, it's not going to taste that good. Did I say it right? Okay, this cheese is a very strong tasting cheese. I don't use it for its flavor as much. I use it for its ability to melt. Does that make sense? It has the ability to kind of melt like pizza cheese, if that makes sense. And so it has that ability. So I'm using this. So this is my second cheese. I'm only using a little bit, not too much. Too much is going to be too powerful. This cheese is too strong. So you don't want to use too much of this cheese. Again, I don't like this cheese by itself. For me, it has a touch of such a strong flavor that I don't like. But it, if you use it in this a smaller quantity in connection with the other cheeses and also the other ingredients, it cones it down, and I'm using it for its ability to melt. You all with me right now? Yes. All right. Here's my third cheese. Come on now, y'all. Y'all getting excited right now? So again, these two ingredients, my, my cashew cheese with my, my mozzarella cheese, it would taste even better. But it's still not as good as I know it can be. You guys got me not, right now? Come on now. Now I got some cheddar cheese, all right? And it, when I put the cheddar cheese inside of here, it's going to taste great. Oh, it's going to taste really good. But the thing is, the texture still isn't going to be perfect yet. It's still going to taste, the taste is going to be, I mean, popping out of your mouth. But I want something a little bit more like Mama made it, if that makes sense. Come on now, talk to me, y'all. I wanted how Mama made it when I was growing up. 
and she would get all excited and she would say, baby, I'm making you some mac and cheese. I wanted that kind of mac and cheese. I became a vegan. I couldn't I couldn't get the mac and cheese for a while because I didn't know how to make these recipes. But mama said, it's going to be OK. If you still want to eat it, I still make it for you. But I said, mama, I'm going to be a vegan right now. I'm going to try to do something a little bit different because we die way too young. And I said, Lord, can you show me how to make it healthy? Can you show me how to make it taste good? And the Lord began to teach me how to make it taste really good. So he said, guess what? Add the cashew cheese to it. Come on now, y'all. Get excited with me. Go ahead and add the mozzarella cheese to it. Come on now. Then he said, go ahead and add the cheddar cheese. But he said, oh, man, don't stop there. You need one more ingredient. Ask your mama how to make that that, that grandma's gravy. And when you add it to the mac and cheese, boy, it's going to taste just like mama mama made it. And it's going to taste real good. Come on now, y'all. Y'all getting excited with me now? Come on now. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Come on now. When I added that last ingredient to mama's mac and cheese, man, it's like the flavor just exploded. Now, that's what you call mac and cheese. You guys got that? There you go. All right. So you mix it all together. Really simple. Mix it all together. And... We're going to put this in the oven, 350, about 40 minutes. Once it's completed, at the very last five, seven minutes, you put it on broil. It's going to brown the mac and cheese, give you a nice little crispiness on the top edges of the mac and cheese. So you got a little crisp, and you got that meltiness and that chewiness. Come on now, you guys getting excited, right? A little chewiness in there now, come on now. All right? Y'all ain't know I can preach when you have making food, did you? You ain't know about that, did you? He was like, man, he's doing a run right now. Come on now. You got to get excited about it. Come on. If you don't get excited about it, you're not going to go and do it. So I got to get you guys excited about it. Because we don't get excited about cooking sometimes. And the Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. And he wants the food to taste, guess what? Good. Y'all with me now? So last thing I'm going to do real quick. I'm going to clean up these edges. Hope you guys ain't getting mad at me because I know you've been watching me cook too long. I'm going to feed you at the end, so don't get no worry about it. I'm going to feed you. All right. All right, so we're going to put this in the oven. All right, my mac and cheese is cooking a little too long. I need somebody to cut that off for me. Because the other mac and cheese I'm supposed to serve, y'all, is going to be burned up. So if I can get somebody special to help me to turn these ovens off. It look good, though. I'm going to take it out. All right. So this is my mac and cheese that's done. Y'all look good, don't it? Look real good, right? All right. So we're going to have this a little later. And so what we're going to do, we're going to turn this, magnet, this oven on warm if we can. All right? Let's put it on warm. Let's go ahead and put that bottom oven on if you can for me. Any questions on how we made that mac and cheese? Anybody got any questions? Somebody to make the next recipe about to keep it moving. Yes. Did you put, like, your homemade sour cream in there? Yeah, you can add. I mean, that's just another type of fat. So you can put a sour cream if you wanted to into it. You know, so I use the butter like in the gravy. You can actually add any kind of fat that you like. That's natural. Obviously plant-based. And it still be vegan. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely do any of that. Yes, ma'am. Any other questions? Yes. You were talking about yeast. Yes. Yeast together with the seasoning. Have you uh, just a yeast alone or together with the chicken no, so the yeast, the nutritional yeast is the base ingredient for the nutritional yeast, I mean, for the chicken-style seasoning. So the, the, if you ever have a chicken-style seasoning from the store, the main ingredient is nutritional yeast flakes. Oh, okay. So you just use the chicken-style seasoning, yeah, oh, okay. by itself. Yeah. Um, the bottom one could be on uh, 350. 350. Yes, ma'am. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just clean up a second really quickly, and we're going to go ahead and make our next recipe. We're going to make our delicious... Delicious soul food greens. Really easy to do. Okay. All right. Now, can I get a helper? Somebody help me out real quick. All right. Can you take some, take that gravy out of that? And can you put that, in, put that inside of a bowl for me or something? Need you guys to help me out. Can I get another helper just to rinse these two dishes off for me right here? Can I get somebody else to help me on this? All right. And what we're going to do, there you go. We're going to make our next recipe. Mama always told me to keep the kitchen clean while you cook. Is that okay? Yes. All right. Keep the kitchen clean as a cook. All right. 
Yes, question, yes. Yeah, so the seasoning, you can buy the seasoning and just follow the recipe that I gave you, right? If you don't have the seasoning, you can use nutritional yeast flakes, and for every quarter cup, you use about a half a teaspoon of salt. Does that make sense? Yeah, so if you don't have it, you can still follow the same recipe, but use a quarter cup of nutritional yeast flakes, but a half a teaspoon of salt. That'll give you a base, base flavor for it. You can add a little more salt if you need to, if you want it more salty. Add a little garlic and different ingredients to kind of add some more flavor to it, however you like. Does that make sense? All right. Oh. All right. All right, somebody <laughs> grist this off if you can. I'm going to need that. You want me to wash the skillet for me? Yes, please. All right, so next thing I'm going to make. Thank you, ma'am. All right. All right, so you want to do greens or you want to do kale salad first? Give me give what you guys want to do. Let me know. Y'all said the greens? All right, let's do the greens, okay? All right, so... I got a bowl of kale, right? We got different types of kale, right? I like to have fun with my kale. I, like, I got some, this is the dinosaur kale, curly kale, and I got some red kale, okay? So we're going to use all these kales, okay? And again, once you understand how to make this, man, you're going to be so excited because your greens will never be bitter again, all right? So again, again, a lot of times we make greens, sometimes the greens have a bitter flavor to it. And it kind of sometimes, that bitterness, when things are too bitter, sometimes it doesn't always uh, have that nice savory experience, if that makes sense. So what we're going to learn how to do is how to make a delicious, savory, mouth-watering green. Is that okay, y'all? All right. So there's a couple of ways of doing this. I'm going to do a little differently today. I'm going to actually just cut this up, kind of fine. I keep my stems, okay? So don't ask me about taking these stems out because I'm not going to do it, okay? Some of y'all don't like stems, but it's all, that's why nutrient sets. So keep them stems in there now. All right? Keep them stems. Now, one way I can make this is I can make something called pot liquor, okay? Yeah. Anybody know about pot liquor? Yeah. I don't think you guys know about pot liquor, man. Yeah. Now, where I'm from, we made pot liquor. Now, back in the day, before I, was, you know, before I knew about the, the vegan stuff, we used to add some special ingredients to make our pot liquor, if that makes sense, okay? Some of those ingredients were... First ingredient, when we first started out, it was called ham hocks, all right? Now, when we learned a little bit better, we kind of got away from the ham hocks, and then we started using turkey necks, all right? And that also gave flavor, you follow what I'm talking about? But I got even away from that. Sometimes we even have a little bit more fun, and we add some bacon to it. Is that okay, right? Now, back in the day, back in the day day, I'm not that old, but back in the day day, we would take the grease from the bacon grease, and we put the bacon grease juice in the pot liquor, if that makes sense, right? Now, that's how, where I came from, right? Yep. So all that smoky, that bacon flavor, that, all that, we got to figure out how to do all of that. Yep. So when somebody that's not vegan, when they try this, they're like, greens? Come on, man. You talking about pot liquor? They thinking about all of that. That's, that's their context. So how do we give them a good context that's actually healthy without any of those ingredients? Ah, now we're going to have some fun. You guys ready for this? All right, let's do it. All right, so look. Here we go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually use an ingredient first to cut the bitterness of the kale. It would also work with collard greens. It would also work with mustard greens. I'm going to cut the bitterness. And I'm going to use an ingredient called Mr. Mr. Cabbage Head, okay? Mr. Cabbage is really important because the cabbage, when you just sometimes we grew up, at least I grew up eating cabbage as well. Boiling cabbage, eating it for dinner. But cabbage has a sweeter taste. It doesn't have a bitter taste when you cook it. So I'm going to cut the kale with the what? With the cabbage, all right? Now, what I'm about to do, I always advise, do not do this at home. You guys got that? Watch. All right. Don't do that at home, okay? Because you probably will cut your finger off with a cutco knife. All right? So don't get excited, kids. I know your brains are like just getting excited right now. Like, ooh, boy, I can't wait till I get on. Don't try it. Please. All right. 
<laughs> All right, it happens so fast, you can cut a finger off. And I cut a few of them, believe it or not. You okay? I'm okay, yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. A little bit of oil. First thing we're going to do, add a little bit of minced garlic. My minced garlic is somewhere right here. Let me some minced garlic on here. So I'm going to go ahead and get my flavors going. Now I'm going to take the minced garlic right here. And I like a lot of garlic in my greens. So I don't know about you. I don't like to be frugal with my, green, with my garlic now. You want all that garlic in these greens now. Don't be mad at me now. I like garlic. Breath funky, but it's anti-fungal. Uh, uh, it's anti-inflammatory. Uh, it's everything anti, right? The garlic is just good. So just be liberal with it, eh? There's some things in life you can be liberal with. Is that okay, y'all? Come on now. All right. All that garlic in there, man. I'm getting excited. All right. So that's heating up. And what I'm going to do, let this start to caramelize. I want this to caramelize. Now, wonder, again, some of y'all, y'all get in the kitchen, you get all excited. You go, I'm going to try Chef Chu's recipe, man. I can't wait to get home to try this, man. So what you start doing, as soon as you put the garlic in, you just want to start dancing with it. You just want to start mixing and stirring and all that kind of stuff. You don't need to do that. I need you all to let it just marinate. Y'all got that? What we're going to be doing, I like to call it layering. Y'all, when I'm from, I'm from the East Coast, when I'm from, and I'm specifically from the D.C. area, from the D.C. Maryland area. So I don't say Maryland. Y'all got that? I say Maryland. Y'all got that? What did I call it? Maryland. Y'all got that? Okay. So I'm from Maryland, all right? So I'm doing something. I'm going to be doing something called layering. What did I say? Layering the flavors. I'm going to layer the flavors and let these flavors just marinate on top of one another, okay? So what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my, got my, got my, uh, get, uh, my garlic at the bottom. I'm not going to turn it. All I'm doing is letting this start to cook. Put my, my cabbage on top, all right? And I'm going to let this cook. It's going to take a little time for it to get started, but once that starts to sizzle, you're going to see what I'm talking about, all right? Now, on top of this, I'm going to add a few flavors. Got me some seasoning. Throw some of that on there. You can also use Bragg's Liquid Aminos. It's another ingredient. It's called what? Bragg's liquid aminos. You can omit the seasoning in this recipe. If you want to go with a different type of umami flavor, you can use a Bragg's instead of the nutritional yeast flakes or the or chicken style flavor. I'm going to go ahead and use the chicken style flavor. I'm going to sprinkle that evenly over top of my cabbage. Evenly over top. All right. So what's going to happen is that this uh, oil and the garlic and the, the, the nutritional yeast flakes and the cabbage it's going to have this amazing flavor. I want to get this roasted. I want to kind of have a roasted cabbage with infused garlic all throughout it. Then there's another special ingredient that I'm going to put inside of here that's going to really make you this, ooh, boy. You guys with me? And it's called, it's a really simple ingredient. You guys have probably heard about it before. Anybody that does barbecue knows about this ingredient. It's called Wright's Hickory Smoke. What makes bacon taste like bacon? Right? It's the smoke, right? They add the hickory smoke to it. So rather than putting the bacon inside of it, we're just going to use a cap full of the hickory smoke. Now, what did I, how much did I say? Now, what did I say? You do too much, you're going to ruin your whole recipe. So you only want to use a cap full of this, okay? You guys got that? All right. As a matter of fact, when you make this recipe, don't pour it over the food. Because sometimes you might slip up a little bit. I've done that before. So I'm going to do it over here, okay? So I make sure I don't ruin what I got, all right? So we're going to put this on top. It's all I need, all right? It's all I need. All right. So I'm going to let that just let it go. I'm not going to mess with it. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to start go ahead and making my uh, kale salad. Is that okay? All right? So, again, I'm going to go ahead and chop all of this up. So I'm going to use... This for our kale salad. I'm going to let that this caramelize, let the flavors roll on that. And we're going to make a kale on kale. Again, when I make this recipe right here, I can eat all of that by myself. By myself. All this is mine. And as a matter of fact, when I make this kale salad, I can eat, guess what? All of that by myself. <laughs> now, if you're having problems doing something called number two, get the kale greens in the kale salad. Do it for a few days and see what happens. You will never have problem using the bathroom again. Y'all got that? Natural remedy. Who needs what? What they got? Pepto? What's, what's, what they use? Now, nah, not Pepto Bismol. What they use now? Castor oil, or you know, you got the, the the I don't know, lax lax. You know, they got all these different names these days. They got all kinds of them. 
Let's get some kale, man. I'm telling you what I know. And again, get the different types of kale. Make it fun for yourself. You can eat good and then and use the bathroom real good. You know what I'm saying? Y'all think I'm crazy, man. I am telling you. I'm telling you. Do you know that, that the, the mother of all disease starts in the colon? You feel me? So you add this greens into your lifestyle, into your diet on a regular basis. Throw some spinach up in there. Throw some other dark green leafy vegetables inside of there. You talking about cleansing the blood? Because, again, where the blood is what makes, the, makes everything work. You feel what I'm coming from? You start getting that blood cleansed. Now you can start creating healthy cells. Healthy cells start creating healthy, healthy uh, uh, tissues, and tissues make organs, and organs make organ systems, and the whole body becomes healthy and revitalized and restored. We're talking about, so that's what I'm talking about now. Come on now. I'm going to feed you good now. Don't worry about y'all. Don't, don't get too impatient with me. I know y'all looking at me now. We're almost done. Almost done. All right. Here we go. I'm going to take some of this. So I'm going to throw me some kale up inside of here. All right. Now I'm good. This is good. This is really good. Now what I'm going to do, let that mark, I'm going to start, I'm going to, I'm fine. It's been about 10 minutes. I haven't even messed with it yet, y'all. Y'all got that, right? I'm going to go ahead and do a little stir, stir. Don't try this at home, please. Y'all going to get all excited, going to be thinking you some chefs, and you're going to burn your foot off now. Don't try that at home. All right. What I'm going to do, I'm going to rinse this out real quick. And we're going to make our own salad dressing. Now, again, I'm going to teach you guys about how you can literally save some money on salad dressing. We're going to make a salad dressing at home. Now, if I go on you all's refrigerator, you guys got some salad dressings in there. I'm going to pull them out for, for case of uh, example. Somebody can go on that big refrigerator to the left and pull out those salad dressings at the bottom for me, please. Somebody help me out. Help me out, please. On the other refrigerator, on the very bottom, bottom left, you got some of those uh, dressings down there. I think most of those are the vegan dressings. The, the vegan dressings, the follow your heart. Give me the follow your heart kind, the follow your heart. Give me that one right there. Okay. All right. Anybody know how much follow your heart dressing costs? All right. Most stores, again, you're going to be anywhere between 5 to $7 in most stores. You might find a little less if it's on sale. Okay. Now, here's the thing. I'm not saying don't buy this because it's definitely a lot better than a regular dressing because it doesn't have the dairy in it. But I'm going to show you how to make, I mean, literally, I can make the same amount, amount of dressing for literally for less than 50 cents. You guys got that? Make it from scratch yourself. Here's the recipe how you do it. I'm actually making an Annie's dressing, which I love the Annie's dressing. I'm going to be making a similar recipe to the Annie's dressing, which is a green goddess dressing. We're going to make something similar to the green goddess. This is about 4 or $5 in the store. We're going to make our own from scratch. And again, you can use this. It can go a lot of different ways. But I want you guys to help me out. Call out the ingredients. What do we have on our, on our kale salad recipe? What's the ingredients that I have? Help me out, please. All right, how much lemon juice? Three tablespoons. All right, three tablespoons of lemon juice. All right. One, two. Why do you think we need to use lemon juice for our kale salad? What's, why is that important? Takes the place of vinegar. There you go. Excellent. But what is that? What does the vinegar and the lemon do? What's, what's the property that, I guess you would call it, what kind of, um, it's an acid. There you go. So what is the acid going to do to the vegetable? It's going to break it down. So we want to use the lemon, or again, a lot of times vinegar is being used to be able to break down the vegetable. Next ingredient. Help me out, please. All right, tahini. All right, love tahini. has a slight bitter taste to it. Doesn't taste like peanut butter, but it looks like peanut butter. Has a slight bitter taste to it. But it's going to actually, gonna, it's this tahini is going to give me a good mouthfeel. Does that make sense? Because it has that creaminess with the tahini, okay? How much tahini do I need? One fourth cup. One fourth cup. So I'm going to use four tablespoons of this. I'm going to oil my tablespoon so it makes it easy to work with. Easy to work with. All right. I'm going to use four of these. All right. One, two, Three, and we got how one more? Four. four. That makes four tables and makes one quarter cup. What's next? Uh, liquid brags. One tablespoon. All right, one tablespoon of liquid Bragg's aminos. Give it up for liquid Bragg's aminos. Thank you very much. All right, boom. How much? What's next? Honey, one tablespoon. All right, one tablespoon of honey. 
Some of y'all who might be really strict vegans or you don't, you don't use honey, you can use, uh, you can use regular uh, uh, maple syrup. I, don't, I really don't personally like maple syrup, but I probably would use a cane sugar or you can use, I wouldn't use a molasses. Um, you can use agave or uh, something like that. So if you don't use honey, you can, go, you can, you can use something else. Um, but cane sugar works just fine. All you need is a little sweetener to cut down the acid or the, or the sourness from the lemon juice. The reason why a lot of times people use vinegar, because vinegar doesn't have a sour taste to it. Does that make sense? Right. So a lot of times people use lemon juice. Um, they, use, they use, I'm sorry, vinegar instead of the lemon juice. But vinegar obviously has, you know, there's some, some health concerns about vinegar at times. But so lemon juice, if you use lemon juice, you can cut down the sourness by adding a little bit of honey. sweetener or honey. Does that make sense? Yeah. One tablespoon? Yeah, one tablespoon, yeah. All right. What we got next? One fourth teaspoon of salt. All right, one fourth teaspoon of salt. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, this is looking really good. I pretty much caramelized this really nicely. All right. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add my kale right on top. Made in minutes. So there's two ways I can do this. I can actually just straight up boil my kale separately. Right. And get it really tender. Some of y'all don't want to put too much heat on your greens. That's OK. Uh, if I'm making it for my family, the first step I probably would do is boil it because I want a little bit more tender. What they're familiar with. At the same time, you can saute this how I'm doing it right now. It's going to be a little bit more chewier than a boiled kale, but it's still really delicious. You guys with me? All right. So I got all my flavor. Really, it's already in that cabbage and the seasoning that I've already put inside of it, and the garlic that's been inside, it's been infusing in that. A lot of my flavor is inside of that. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, so last thing, I'm going to add a little bit of water to this. A little bit of water. Add a little bit of water to this. And I'm going to, at the end of this, after this, I'm just seasoning it to taste. I'm going to add a little bit of oil, just a little bit more. That oil is also going to give a little bit of mouthfeel, yeah. almost like a broth, if that makes sense. It'll give a little bit of mouthfeel to it. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of oil. So a little water. Say it again. You got now nah, not inside the greens. That's gonna be inside the kale salad. All right. A little bit of oil. This is optional. I like a little bit of oil for mouthfeel. And actually, the oil also kind of enhances the flavor of it as well. All right. Some a little, little oil. Not too much. All right. A little oil there. I'm gonna do a little bit more seasoning. All right. And let that dis let that discard the cook. And the water is going to help to bring that flavor in there. We have lastly on this some sea salt, right? Yeah, one quarter teaspoon. All right, so we're going to shake a little bit of this in there. One quarter teaspoon right here. All right. Oh, we almost done. A little too much. All right, we good. Is that everything? Oh, cayenne pepper. All right. Man, where's my, where's my friend? Where's my friend at? That, where, I had one of my friends gave me some cayenne. He had some hot cayenne, man. That cayenne was hot. That was a little much. But it's all good. <laughs> I like heat. You know what I'm saying? That was an accident, y'all. You know how it is. Oh, most, okay, my bad. One quarter of water. Okay, all right. You know how y'all good at this are. Y'all like some heat, don't you? Come on now. A little cayenne ain't hurt nobody. All right. All right. Four quarter cup, four tablespoons. All right, now we're done. Now the great thing about this, this is a very concentrated uh, salad dressing. Believe it or not, that whole this whole uh, salad dressing can do this whole bowl. Okay, wow. all right. So you don't need as much dressing to do the same thing with that dressing. Does that make sense? It does. Uh, this goes a lot further than that. It's wow. so almost like half of this to that does the same amount. Does that make sense? Okay, that's a good thing. <laughs> Thirty seconds done. All right, you guys excited? We almost done. We about to get some good eating on. And last thing I'm gonna do, throw this in here real quick. All right, nice and creamy. All right. Now I'm going to do a little massage technique. You got to massage this. Okay. Got a lot going on up here. 
going to just move this out the way for myself. Made a mess, but it's all good. All right. All right, so the massage is all in here. You can see it's looking good already, right? You can add, I mean, right now you can add some other ingredients, some carrots. You know, you can add, you know, some cauliflower, some broccoli. I mean, you can go however you want to do it. It's up to you, you know? But for me, this bowl is mine. Don't even ask me for any, okay? Because when I eat this, man, I'm, about, I'm ready. Like, I'm ready to take over the world. I mean, imagine having this for lunch. I'm going to let you taste it now. Come on now. All right. So there we go. I'm massaging this down, getting these flavors. If you guys can help me, some of you ladies, if you don't mind, help me to clean this area up. I'm going to start getting these foods ready to go. Any questions on what I've done? Any questions? Y'all see that right there? Voila. You got kale salad. If you want to be a little bit more tender, let it sit for about an hour. It's going to be a little bit more tender. But you got kale salad, throw some carrots on top of that, whatever you want to add to it. Make a delicious kale salad, I mean, made in minutes. I mean, it's that simple. The great thing about some of the recipes that I showed you all today is that all these recipes can be, you can make the dressing, you can freeze it. You can freeze it and make it a lot of it. Get some, uh, some of the glass uh, mason jars, some of the, they got the smaller ones, you can make a lot of this stuff. And the cheese sauce, you guess what, you can freeze it. All right? And voila, you guys, you guys can clean this table for me if you don't mind as well. Right here. And now what's happening though, check this out, y'all. So right here I got my greens. All right, I'm gonna, let me go ahead and stir this up a little bit. I'm about to throw this pan on right here because I'm about to get you guys some steak made. About to get this mac and cheese going. You guys about to eat good, man. Now, you know I take donations now. Come on now. I mean, I'm just being keeping it real. Again, some of y'all don't know. Again, Mr. Carl Parker, who did this event, you know, he didn't actually uh, charge the church. He, you know, I didn't even give him a price that said, I'm coming, Carl. I just coming out to help. So if anybody wants to support the ministry, you know, we'll take a, just a donation. You know, I can do an auction right now. I got some good food. I take a good donation for an auction on this food I made. I can give y'all a big plate. You know what I'm saying? A big plate. You know how you go in the, you don't say nothing when you go in the airplane. You know, you got coach. You'll pay $200 extra to ride the coach. Now, some of y'all want a big plate. I know you do. I can see it in your eyes. This teaser. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and mix this, uh, this kale in here. All right, so there we go. That's looking really good, y'all. So I got my kale. I need to let it cook for this a little bit longer. All those flavors in there. All those flavors. It look good, right? You got a little rice, a little rice of barley, man, and... You know, you just got good eating. You see that broth, that little pot liquor on that thing right now? Come on now, talk to me, y'all. Talk to me. So what did you have the burner on for that during that time? Uh, I had it on uh, about medium, medium high. Medium, medium high. So that's pretty much, again, cook that a little longer. Let that, all that flavor is going to come inside of that. Again, if you want to add some onions to that, you can add onions into that kale. You can also add some uh, green peppers and onions. You can have a lot of fun with it. It's, it's a base recipe. So it's no, it's no set uh, model that you got to do, okay? So again, we're going to go ahead, y'all, and get ready to do this thing. Any questions on what we've done? Any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Were you using raw cashews in that first? Yes, I used raw cashews, raw cashews in there. So again, I want to ask you guys a question. Where's my, where's my man? Where's, where's Shane at? Is Shane here? Where's Shane at? All right, Mr. Shane's my videographer. Say, say thank you, Mr. Shane, for all your hard work. And also thank, what's your name again, sir? Mr. Frank's amazing, y'all. Frank's amazing. He actually got this recorded so you guys can go back and watch it. It's going to be on your website, I'm assuming. Um, so you have that available for you guys. But again, yesterday I asked some of you guys that who would want to see an amazing vegan restaurant in Portland? Who wants to see that happen? Come on now. Come on. Raise your hands high. Come on now. Who wants to see that happen, okay? Now, here's the thing. You know what's so powerful? Keep your hands up one more time now. One more time. I want to see it. All right. I got the hands now. Now, here's the thing. You can put them down. So what I want you all to know is that the great thing about a restaurant, this is what I do on a regular basis at our restaurant. I do cooking classes on a regular basis at our restaurant. And this is so intimate. It's so amazing because you get to build relationships with the community. Does that make sense, right? 
And so one thing I always say, you know, when you've got these type of environments, restaurants and these type of things, you can use it as a way to reach your community. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's an amazing tool that can be used to show God's love, okay? So we're getting the plates out right now. We're getting the food going. Last thing I'm going to show you while we're getting the food together. Keep you guys energetic. We're going to make our steak. I'm good. We're going to get the plates ready, get the mac and cheese going. And what we're going to do, I'm going to show you guys how fast and how easy it is to make our product. So this is our Better Chew steak, okay? So I'm actually going to use this, and I'm going to make kind of like a beef, beefy rib, a beefy brisket rib, okay? And, and literally, it's made, again, in minutes. It comes in this format. All you got to do is put it on a pan, saute it up, and literally in three to five minutes... You got some of the best tasting plant-based ribs you ever had in your life. Who believes me out there now? All right, come on now. You're going to have to try it now. Come on now. All right, now, now Mr. Parker had something this morning. Now, was it good, Mr. Parker? Yes, sir. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get this going. So we're going to go ahead. I need some helpers. I get some more hands up here. I get some hands. We can get the food ready to go, the plates going. I know you guys are ready to eat. So you guys can get some gloves right here, some gloves, and some gloves, and we're going to go and get the mac and cheese that we have in the oven up top. We can start with that. So we're going to make some real quick samples. All right, so show you guys how this works. Man, we got everybody working already now. Come on, I'm getting excited, y'all. Come on now. All right, where's the oil at? I think I, I just misplaced the oil. Okay, I'm going to put a little oil in the pan. Thank you. I'm going to saute this meat up. All right. All right, here we go. Really easy to do. So I'm going to need you guys to help with. We're going to get these plates. We got the uh, mac and cheese. You start putting mac and cheese on the plate and the kale salad on the plate, if you don't mind, please. Mac and cheese and kale salad, okay? And I got greens right here as well. All right, so I'm putting this right on the griddle. It's going to be made in minutes. All right, all you're giving is a taste. We're just giving one little scoop. Just one little scoop. You know, smaller it's, it's, than this, maybe? Yeah, yeah good? I'm just giving one little scoop. You don't need to do too much. Okay. Just one little scoop. So you need the guys to make an assembly line. So one person can do the greens, so we can make an assembly line. So once you get one, we can do the kale salad and then the greens at the end, okay? All right, so we can do greens over here. Somebody want to do the greens over here? So you can pass the plate along. Once you do the plate, just pass it to the next person, Okay. So, so one person do the mac and cheese, and you pass it on. Then somebody can do. I need one more helper over here to help with the uh, the greens, please. We need a little bit of greens on that plate as well. And I'm gonna come around and serve you guys with the the ribs. Yeah, somebody can do the serving. Once we get all the uh, uh, the greens on it, we can start serve start serving. We're going to keep on serving. We're going to say a prayer in a second. But I want to thank you guys for this, your support. We are excited that we can serve this good food. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up with a song and a prayer. Is that okay? Amen. So we'd like to say fruits and grains and vegetables, nuts and seeds is all I need. It tastes so good, so good to me. Let's not live to eat, but let's eat to live. Hey, friends, my name is Chef Chu, and as I always say, gonna give you something to chew on. All right.
right, let's go ahead and buy our hands. Brother Parker, say a prayer for us, please. Father, we thank you for this food, for this time together. Thank you for Chef Chu sharing his gift. And Lord, we pray that as we eat this food, that it will nourish and strengthen our bodies, that we might be able to give you the glory. In Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Ribs. Honey. I need some meat, bro. Huh? I need some meat. You already have these, man. Come oh. on, oh, man. <laughs> Is there anyone else who needs to be How many more? The back How many more, Anybody? Everybody's been served? <laughs> 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 